This is Juliana Rennie-Carbreeze, and this is part two of my interview with Stephen. Uh, Stephen, you've used an amazing word, agglutinative. Would you mind please telling me what it means? Agglutinative is a class of language in which uh, the grammar consists of extra little bits tagged on the end of the main word. Uh, this is different from uh, an inflected language like Latin or English or German, which has different endings for different genders, cases. Um, well, Turkish language is like that. It's Turkish different. is agglutinative, yes. Oh, right. Um, and uh, another major class of language is called isolating, which is like Chinese, where the words are largely monosyllables and you don't have different grammar endings. It depends on word order more than anything. I, I heard, yes, you, it, it, they say I go yesterday or I go yes. tomorrow yes, or something. That's right. And uh, English is heading that way. Right. It's, English used to have the same kind of grammar as Latin and Greek, but it's been losing its endings over the centuries. Really? And now word order um, is, is what governs England. Man bites dog and dog bites man. You don't have nominative cases and accusative cases like you might have in Latin or German. It's word order. Um, that, and uh, a number of interesting things happen in, in uh, English that haven't happened in other languages. For instance, in English, you can verb any noun at will, as I just did, which you can't do in French. Or they get they get very up in arms if you try creating words. But like the that. French language has got all the Brit all the English, uh, you uh, know, the weekend. And, yes, they've uh, adopted a number of all terms. All sorts of yes. Um, but whereas in English we could say, uh, I think our weekend in Wales. People will understand what you mean, even if they've never heard weekend used as a verb before. Oh, I've not heard it myself. But you know what I mean. Yes, of course. That's what I mean. Ah. Now, English has that ad adaptability that many of the others only can do with much longer phrases. And it's part of the reason why English has been adopted so widely, I think. It's not just the effect of the empire. It's because there's a certain pragmatic... Uh, simplicity to it. But I'm astounded by the amount of English people that I know who can't speak English properly. The What's worst that? of all, which pains me, having been an English teacher in my past life, is you was. Ah, I mean, that, that's just... a legitimate dialect form. But uh, uh, it, it is. It's different from the official grammar. Oh, dreadful! But it is, uh, and and the same way in say in the West Country, you say I were here instead of I was here, Not and in other that. parts you say you was there. And that's because the, the, the loss of detail that I mentioned earlier is happening there at a different rate. I'm talking about people in London, people yes. I meet. I mean, they're yeah. not, they're not, that's you know. That's a feature of London speech. Oh, uh, And that's, be, that's because the idea of singular and plural, like was and were, is lost. And there's is one form for both. Sometimes it's was in one part of the country, sometimes it's were in another. And if there were no transport between them, they would spin off and end up as ultimately two different dialects, possibly even not mutually comprehensible. I mean, uh, if you hear a Geordie and a Cornishman trying to have a conversation, they find it very hard to understand each other, even though they are both forms of English. Well, how about, uh, for example, when you text these days, People, um, I can't bear it when people go your, which should be Y O U apostrophe yes. R E, and they write Y O U R. Yeah, yeah. And these are meant to be educated people. Yes. Well, that, the written form. And I didn't uh, correct them because that would be insulting. Yes. But what's interesting is that the written forms always lag in a language behind the spoken forms. And because they are homonyms in speech, People write them homographically, let us say. It's what the, does that mean? It means it sounds the sounds the same, and, and therefore they use the same spelling because they know that it, well, they, they perhaps don't know explicitly, but it means that they will be understood. Even but these if are say, educated oh, it's people I'm talking about. Yes, indeed. Um, convenience and pragmatism. It may not always be what you want. 
But it's very interesting that this is an ancient thing. You find it in Roman writers, you find it in Babylonian writers from hundreds of years BC, that people saying the young and keep getting it wrong and making free with this, that and the other. Um, they don't know the proper rules and so on. It's because spoken speech always evolves faster and the written language has to catch up with it. Um, and uh, that's, this is the same wherever you look. Uh, so one has to be uh, slightly more generous minded because um, you merely say, just as you say, you see somebody walking in a certain way, you say that's the way they walk. You don't say they're walking wrongly. I need to tell them how to walk correctly. And it's really the same with speech, except of course speech is between two people and there is an element of having to do it the way the other person needs but, but to hear But surely it. education and class comes into that. These are all parts of the way a culture differentiates internally and it always has been so. Uh, speech um, communities, as, they, as you might think of them, say in one village or whatever, stratify. Uh, they differ from the next village. And it, it has been said that um, a, an official language is a dialect with an army. That's to say, able to impose their correctness upon everybody else. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, I come from Liverpool and I remember a word in particular which is, doesn't appear to be used anywhere else, and that's cockloft. For the attic, you know, um, yes. when I say, oh, it was up in the cockloft, people go, what? Yes. yes. Well, Where? <laughs> many dialect um, ter bits of terminology like that I find everywhere. And uh, in uh, my home village, Benenden in Kent, two, uh, there was a married couple who were both employed by my grandfather when he lived there and, and by my own parents and I knew them both in adulthood. They had been married for 60 something years. They came from 12 miles apart. And even then, after 60 years of marriage, one would say to the other, what was that you said? I've never heard anybody say that before. <laughs> exactly the same way. Um, that was be between Burwash and Benenden, which I think is 12 miles. All right. All uh, right. And this is what it always is like. You'll find it in the jungles of Peru, the same way. The same village, you know, two two villages. They will say they always talk funny over there. Yeah. You, but you you give lectures. Where, where, for example, have you given lectures? Um, on and on and on what? Well, on this sort of range of subjects, or on ancient literature subjects from um, Egypt and Mesopotamia, from say a thousand two thousand BC. Um, to the University of Sussex Archaeology Society, I think four talks there, um, and a series of individual ones at various uh, university locations as part of a conference or something like that. Mm. Well, we'll continue talking in part three. Thank you very much.